or share a thought around identifying and, and, and retaining top quality talent? Because we're all competing with each other, frankly, around our talent. I think we all are in agreement that the universities mm -hmm. are not necessarily putting out exactly the people that, right. that, that, that will do well in the disciplines that, that we work in, right? Uh, nobody comes out knowing how to develop and validate a PK or immunogenicity right. or biomarker or NAB assay, right? So, so, and there's a limited number of people out there with that level of experience and expertise. So, so I can tell you the approach we have taken. Um, we have actually, um, you know, again, just a traditional recruiting and all that goes on. But the key is, once you identify those individuals that you find a talent in them, bring them in, have a training program, beyond just reading a couple weeks of SOP. So we have actually initiated what we call Bioagilytics University. Mm -hmm. It is about 10 or 12 module. It's about one to one and a half hour long. And we take them through every step. And it's a once a month or sometimes a couple times a month. And, and, and so we are in essence providing continuing education internally within the company. And to us, we finally started doing this and it is very effective. So to me, that, that's one. Now in terms of retention, if you look at, so today I, I, I'm happy to tell you that we have over 90% employee retention. It's one of the highest in the market. Wow. The way we do that is not because we can compete, to be very frank with you, with the compensation that some of the farmers might be able to mm -hmm. provide. It's about, and it's not that the employees are not working very hard. It is an environment that, 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 that is a family-oriented environment, that people come in, majority of the, the joy they get is working with different clients, different projects, and within the company, having that camaraderie, right. the level of trust that I watch for you. And so um, it is great that I can tell you probably about over 95% plus of my senior staff and scientists that have started with me you know, almost a decade ago, they're still with us. So it takes a lot of time and effort, mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I'm, I'm very curious to hear about, you know, from, from, from the, other, the other folks and learn well, from you guys. Do you, do you bring them in? What's their first role? So you bring them in and you say, okay, you're a method developer. Or you bring them in, put them into production. So, so what we do to, mm. um, it may be it's a little excessive, but mm. we actually, during the interview process, we sort of try to see what is it they're good at. And, mm. and by that, we actually give, give every employee, doesn't matter, bachelor, master, or PhD, zero or 20 years experience, they have to take a written test. We've yeah. got to understand mm. what are the gaps. Um, you can have PhDs that still do not know how to do a simple conversion. And it's okay. And in some instances, we have bachelor level coming out of school that they are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also give them a hand pipette test with food coloring. We try to assess them, right? Mm -hmm. And also we ask them, what is it that they like to do? Taking all that into consideration, we also got to see what is the type of demand that is coming from the market right. and try to balance that. There is, I don't think there is one solution that fits for every pharma, biotech, or a CRO. This has worked well for us, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to see how can we keep this culture and this system as we grow, right? right. This, the key is as you grow, maintain what is working. Right. So. Yeah, I think we take kind of the same approach where you try to do your best, but it's